So let's talk about 360 uh, of people's portraits. This here is in order for a full conversion. If we turn it to the side, and you'll see the back, top, bottom, right? So it's a full 360. Um, now the question is, how do we use Cockpit 3D to effectively convert this into an optimal point cloud to burn into a crystal? Well, if we leave our settings the same, 0707, uh, projection from the front at 8, 5, and 2, and we click on Go, it will do what it normally does with any model that you receive. It'll create a point cloud of any part of the geometry that it sees, and whatever it cannot see, such as the backside, it will make invisible. So it looks just like a regular 180-degree 3D file. Now, to come around this, uh, as you know, we have the option of X-Ray. If we click on X-Ray, it gives us three options. Directional, multi-project, or surface normal. And as explained in other tutorials, um, directional lets you choose uh, the direction in which the crystal is going to be seen. It'll create points all around, but it will sort them in a way so that when you're looking at the crystal, it will look best from the d direction that you select here. So if the crystal were to be viewed from the front, as in this case, um, you would select front and it would create the point so it looks excellent from the front. Let's actually do that right now. So we're going to change this to X-ray, directional front. We'll leave our settings the same and we'll click on go. Okay, and it looks good from the front, but when you turn it to the side, it's not the best view. You can see it's fuzzy. If, for example, this crystal was going to be displayed for whatever reason, um, such that the side was going to be the primary um, viewing angle, then in that case, you would change this here to the side. Right? Now you can see it's a lot sharper from the side, but when you look at it from the front, it's very, very fuzzy. So, multi-project, oh sorry, directional is one of the options that you could use with the raster, rasterizer type of x-ray in order to generate your point cloud. The other is multi-project. If you do multi-project, it's going to choose um, automatically the best view from uh, three sides, the um, front or the back, the left or the right, the top or the bottom. And if you use surface normal, it will create a point from every angle of each polygon. And that works well for um, certain objects, but for people we found um, that if you're going to use the X-ray rasterizer type, more than likely you're going to want to use a directional front. Now, there are other ways to actually make this point cloud look even better. X-ray is the easiest because it's a simple click and it just does everything. However, if you want to customize the settings a little more, as you can see here with X-ray, the back is seen through the front. You see that little line there? That's from the back side. And, and we're, we're seeing that through the front because X-ray is giving the same level of priority from all sides. So it's treating the front with the same priority or power or brightness or number of layers as the back. Okay, so that means that the back is going to be just as powerful as the front. And so therefore, um, you're seeing a lot of the details from the back seep through the front, which isn't the most elegant when you're um, burning this in a crystal. You kind of want the back to be a little weaker so that the best, most powerful image uninterrupted is from the front. So uh, to do that, what we could do is we could change our settings from x-ray to projection. We keep our front on like normal. You can see here it's enabled. But now what we'll also do is we'll turn on the back. So it's going to project from the front and from the back. We're going to enable it. And we're going to, as you know, our front projection had eight layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our back projection with 
four layers, so half the number of layers as the front. Um, our Z factor is going to remain at five. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click on go. And it looks much better. You can see it from the front, from the side, and the back's a little weaker, which is exactly how we want it. Just want to point out a word of caution here is that when you are um, selecting or turning on other directions, make sure your fill solid is off by default. You might see that it's on. Let's just take a look at another one. There you go. See, it's on. Um, but uh, that's okay. That was for a direction that's not enabled, so it doesn't really matter. But for the two directions that are enabled right now, the front and the back, you want to make sure that your fill solid is off. If it's on, then what it will do is it will remove the texture and it will just um, create a point cloud with a plain white color. So you'll see this image of the lady or this object of the lady but without her skin textures and you won't know who it is. It's just like a general body. There you go. Right? So you can see it's there's you can't really see who it is. Alright, now we're not done yet. We can still make this look even better. Just take it back to where we were before. So this is a projection from the front, a projection from the back. And the back has half the layers than the front. Now, when we look at this from the side, what we'll notice is that it passes. However, we could make it look better. It does look a little fuzzy with all these layers here and everything. It's a little fuzzy. So what we could do is we could reduce our Z factor. Okay, now for regular 180s, you'll always want to leave your settings the way that we have them because they look superior and I mean customers love it, they don't complain. But when it comes to 360, there's so many different angles that people are critiquing uh, this object in the crystal at that you kind of want to try and make sure that it looks the sharpest from all angles. So in that case, what you'll do is you'll reduce your Z factor to 1 for the front and for the back. We'll click on Go. And there you have it. So now it's super sharp from the front and from the side. So this begs the question, why are we not always leaving our Z factor at 5? Well. Uh, sorry, why are we not always leaving our Z factor at 1 and why are we um, setting it to 5? So the, the, uh, the answer to this is because when you set your Z factor to 1, uh, you are increasing the potential of this model cracking when you burn it. You can try and leave it exactly as is right now and it will um, more than likely crack in the crystal, unless you were to reduce the power of your laser significantly. Um, in order to have these high resolution settings of 07 and 07, which is, you know, in the past unheard of, um, you know, you really need to have a Z factor of 5. Um, however, if you want to keep your Z factor at 1 for the purpose of 360, because you've got so many more points coming from the other sides, uh, it is a little more forgiving and you can actually reduce your resolution a bit. So you might want to, on your XY, still keep it at 07 and see if you can get away with just changing your Z to 0 0.10, 0 0.12, 0.14. Experiment with it because every laser is different and the cracking point is different. Um, but you can try this. And uh, we'll just click on go. You shouldn't see much of a difference. Right, very, very small difference, and it still keeps the resolution. Um, if you have to change your X, Y, this will reduce your resolution. Watch. Okay, by a little bit, um, but it also um, reduces your potential for cracking. My recommendation is keep this at 07 to begin with. Just change your Z from 07 to 0.1, see if it works. If not, 0.12, if not, 0.14. Uh, and if that still cracks, and change this to 08. Um, once you figure out what the right setting is, then whenever you have uh, a project like this, 
then you can always use those same settings. You'll want to take note of what works best for you.